Putting a rover on Mars in real life is definitely not an easy feat. However, in Blender it's really not that hard. Follow along with this tutorial, stick around till the end and I'll show you how it's done in Blender. This tutorial comes with a free base file, so go ahead and download that real quick. If you open it up, you'll see a grayish scene with several things already set up. It contains a plane, the Perseverance rover model, a volume and a camera following along with it. The wheels are also animated using the same basic driver system I used in my previous video. It also has a setup mist pass with these distance settings included. Now we're gonna start off by adding in an HDRI and I have this Perseverance 4K CC HDRI which was created by actual footage from the Perseverance rover and it was turned into an HDRI by a Redditor and I've put the link in the description for you guys. Now let's head on over to the shading tab and in here we want to make sure that we are in the world view and then select our environment texture and hit Control T. This is a node wrangler add-on function so make sure you have the add-on enabled. Now let's change our Z location to 0.4 to line up our horizon neatly and also change the Z rotation until we get something that we're happy with. Now for the landscape I have already created this plane with a lot of subdivisions and I've also UV unwrapped it. Now with proportional editing turned on and set to random I'm just gonna uh, scale up some of these areas creating sort of a uh, depth and height and making it look like an actual landscape and I'm just gonna select several vertices and then change a few things around. Uh, important to note that the area around our vehicle should stay flat at all times. And now let's just add a subdivision with control 2 with two levels in the viewport. Please make sure that the viewport levels and render levels are similar as it's very important for the dynamic paint uh, later on. And I'm just gonna tweak the landscape a bit more but now with the smooth fall off settings. Scattering rocks is really easy. First of all, we are going to take our plane, our landscape, and we are going to generate a weight paint map. So let's head on over to the weight paint. And I'm just gonna paint everywhere except for right around our rover here. So I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit, making sure that the area around our rover is completely dark blue, uh, because I don't want any rocks to appear there. And with that out of our way, we can add in two particle systems. I'm gonna name one big and the other one small. And I'm going to set the uh, big one first to hair, enable the advanced settings and change the number to about 150. Enable rotation and set the face to 1. Face randomness can go to 2. And in the render tab, let's change it up from path to collection. Now I'm going to select the big rocks collection here. And I want to choose pick random of course and set the skill to about 3. I'm going to set the skill randomness to 0.5 because I want some uh, skill difference there. And let's head on over to uh, vertex groups here and set the density to our weight paint group map. And that should cover that. And if you don't like what you're seeing, just change the seed around until you get something that fits your taste. Now for the small rocks, let's do something similar. Let's change it to hair as well. Leave the number at a thousand and enable advanced. Set the rotation on again, face to one and face randomness to two. And in this case, I'm going to change it to object instead of collection. And I'm going to look up these small rocks. There it is. Now set the density to the weight paint map as well. The skill can go to 0.03 and the skill randomness can go to 1. And now I want to enable interpolated children because I want way more of these small rocks, which I'm going to set to 30 in both viewport and render levels. And now we should have a bunch of rocks everywhere. And I just want some more around the rover. So I'm going to change our weight paint map here. So going back in there and just painting a bit more and let's just set it up something like this and I think this is fine. Now next up we want to create our tracks and it's actually easier than you think. So with our landscape selected I'm going to select a few faces around our rover model. I want to make sure that the animation is fully covered so I'm going to select quite a few around it. Go to the end of our animation and make sure all those faces are also covered. Now let's hit Shift D to duplicate the faces and hit P to separate it by selection. Now let's rename it so we can tell the difference and we can remove both particle systems as we won't be needing those. Now we are done uh, left with this plane with the subdivisions set uh, to two already there. And I'm just gonna go into edit mode, right click it, 
and subdivide it three more times to get more geometry going there. Now I want to take uh, some of the edges on the side here and with the proportional editing set to smooth again, I'm just going to pull these down until they're slightly under the landscape layer. And that's because I don't want any of the edges to be visible. Now on the far side of our camera, this doesn't really matter. So now let's pull our layer up ever so slightly until we can definitely make sure it's touching the wheels of our rover here. So I'm going to go for something like this. And now before we actually do any of the simulating, I uh, want to add in some materials, which I've already set up in the base file. So I'm just gonna add the wet and rocky sand, not with the 001, with just the regular one to our main landscape. And on the tracks object, I'm gonna use the 001 version, which is the same texture, it's just scaled differently. So it blends better. Now with that out of the way, let's go into the physics tab and add in our dynamic paint for the tracks. I'm gonna add in a canvas here and I'm gonna set the surface type to display and the displace vector to about three. Now so let's select one of our wheels, click on dynamic paint again and add in a brush here. And now we want to select all of our wheels and the one with the dynamic paint modifier lastly, and then go into object, link transfer data and copy modifiers. Now they will all have the same brush dynamic paint settings and we should be good And in going into our canvas here over to cache and hitting bake. Now, if we head on over to solid view, you can see it did work. However, the original landscape is in the way. I'm just gonna go into edit mode with the landscape selected and select a few vertices which are underneath our tracks object. Hit G while holding shift and Z and pulling it down ever so slightly until our tracks become completely visible. And this wraps up creating our dynamic paint tracks. Now, as you saw on the render, I had these dust trails as well, and they are very easy to set up. So let's start off by adding in a plane. So shift A and add in the plane object. I'm gonna move it to the smoke collection, which I already created. And I'm just gonna name this thing smoke sim or something similar to that. Now let's go into solid view real quick and with proportional editing turned off again, I'm gonna move the plane and sort of line it up to the back wheel of the rover like so. Now I'm just gonna pull this up and rotate it, scale it along the uh, local Y axis. And I'm just gonna set it up so it sort of aligns with the back of the wheel and has a nice angle as to which the particles can emit from. So something like this, making sure it's not in contact with the wheel and it should be good looking somewhere like this. Now I'm going to parent it to the main body. So select the main body as well and hit control P to parent it. And it should follow along nicely now with our animation. Now with the plane select, I'm going to add in a particle system here, set the number to about 250 and the lifetime to 15 and the end of our animation to 220, which is the uh, point where our rover stops moving. And I'm gonna go and set the rotation on there. In the render tab, I wanna set it to object. And as the object, I'm gonna choose the smoke puff object, which is just a basic image as plane imported image of a smoke simulation, basically a uh, little cloud of dust, which I made for you guys. And I'm gonna set the scale to one and the scale randomness to 0.8. I'm actually going to decrease the scale to 0.8 as well. Now let's play this back and you will see that all the particles are falling down, uh, which is not realistic because the dust should be floating upwards or at least moving around a little bit. And we can easily fix this by going into the field weights and setting gravity to minus 0.1. Now if we play this back, you will see the particles rise up ever so slightly, creating a way more uh, realistic effect. And now if we increase the lifetime randomness as well, we will get a pretty good looking and realistic result as you can tell in the render view. Now I want to disable the emitter in both render and in viewport display so you won't be able to tell it's there and now it won't show up in our renders as well. That is one of our smoke sims done and we just need to duplicate the plane. It will automatically copy along all these uh, particle simulation settings. So just duplicate it around and make sure it lines up with all six of our wheels should be easy enough and now if you play it back it will be automatically following along with our animation creating dust trails on each of these wheels making everything look way more realistic now let's render out a single frame so we can take that into compositing the compositing for this scene is already set up in the base file so i'm just going to walk you guys through what i did to create the final look here first of all i took the mist pass, which is this one, and I put it through a color ramp with a brownish and blackish color uh, and mix that with a mix RGB node with the original image with the factor creating this extra haze in the distance there. I set it to a low factor so it's very subtle 
And I also did the same, but in reverse to create a darker foreground uh, with a low factor set in the mix RGB node again as well. Now I added the color balance for just some extra color, the RGB curves for more contrast, the glare node to get a nice fog glow around the light on our rover, and finally, of course, the lens distortion node, creating a bit of dispersion and distortion to make everything look more realistic. All right, so that wraps up this video. And if you followed along until here, great job. And you should get something very similar to this result. Uh, I hope you learned something from this video. And I want to point out that the full project files are available on my Gumroad for just $2. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell icon. And please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.